how should we Christians pray? Well, Jesus gave us an example of how to pray. God likes sincere devotion to him. He, it's not about praying to him. Press people with your words. It's not about praying to show people that you're so spiritual. It's not praying so you can just speak random words to fill the air. It's not just praying when... Uh, whenever you need something superficially and then come out even when you're praying the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come they will be done very quickly just so you can cross it off your to-do list and then go about your business that's not being sincere that's not that's not how Jesus asked us, to, us asked us to pray it's not about praying so you can look spiritual it's not about reciting prayer and repeating the same again and again the, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 8 let me show you Matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 8 and when you pray this is Jesus speaking and when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men assuredly i say to you they have their reward but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut the door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will, will re reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard by their many words. Therefore do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Bible is saying, don't be a hypocrite with your prayers. Don't try to be extra spiritual. Don't just pray just to fill the words, the, the air with words. Um, don't pray these repetitions like the heathens do, because then that just proves that's not coming from your heart. You see, God wants a, a, a prayer that's coming from your heart. So you sit there, and I will get into it in a minute, but it's coming from your heart. When, you're, when you just have a, 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 um, a prayer written down on paper, which you've memorized, so now you know it off by heart, and you're just repeating that, repeating that, repeating that, it's no longer really coming from your heart. You've just, you've, you've, you've memorized it. You've repeated it so many times that it's just become memorized. And so the Bible doesn't want you, God doesn't want you making a mantra out of your prayer god doesn't want you turning your prayer into a chant where you're just repeating the same thing over and over again although when i first came to jesus christ and i was new to hearing the holy spirit and i was new to prayer and i was learning how to pray i was learning to sit in the presence of god i was learning to uh, hear his voice um, I was, every time I got in the car, I was repeating the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And I was repeating that again and again. But that was to get me to a place because I didn't know what else to, I didn't know how else to go about it. I didn't know what else to pray. Uh, and I felt that until I strengthen, I become strong, my connection with God becomes strong. My relationship with God becomes strong. My oneness be with God becomes strong until that happens because it was a, a, a process of learning who he is and reading the word and sitting in his presence and learning to hear him. It was a process. Until that happened, I was repeating the Lord's Prayer every time I sat in my car and I thought, I will start building this connection with him. Make sure that prayer is in my mind all the time. To prevent the enemy from coming in with anything defiled until i learn to pray properly and so in a situation like that it's okay 
but there comes a, there came a time where I needed to let go of that and start praying uh, from my heart according to what the Holy Spirit has given me to pray. See, there's a difference, all right? So the Holy Spirit it will teach you how to talk to God in 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 a meaningful way, all right? And this is why Jesus says in Matthew chapter six verses 9 through 13 Jesus says in this manner therefore pray so Jesus is teaching us how to pray in a meaningful way in this manner therefore pray here's a prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen hallelujah praise the lord so let's take it step by step the first part is the first part of the prayer is our father in heaven hallowed be thy name Now, Jesus is not saying use these exact words. He's giving us, um, he's teaching us a way to talk to God that is, me that is meaningful. So the first part addresses God as Father in heaven. It's not addressing any God. This is why it says Father in heaven. A lot of people will mix, will get mixed up with gods in other religions and the gods that are hybrids and gods that are, no, our father in heaven. So it's addressing God. It's not addressing saints. It's not addressing this person. It's not God is the focus. The father in heaven is the focus. The second part says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the second part of the prayer is where we halo God's name. In other words, we tell him, and it could be in our own words, that your name is holy. You are acknowledging his holiness. You are acknowledging his greatness. So for example, God, your father in heaven, you know, you're holy. May you be magnified, your holiness, your magnificence. Holy, holy, holy. And acknowledge his holiness. And praise him for his holiness, his greatness. Glorify his name. And the third part. It says, give us this day our daily bread. No, no, no. Your kid, no, I'm sorry. Your kingdom come and your will be done. That's the, that's the third part. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what you're saying in your own words, you're telling God the things on earth, I would like them to become as they are in heaven. So what you're doing is you're submitting to his will. Father, it's whatever you want. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Father, make what is important to you important to me. Help me to surrender and then surrender. Help me to surrender all places at all times. So for example, if there's any area in your life where you're not surrendering to God, help to ask him, pray to, pray to him, pray to your father and say, help me to surrender. If this thing is not important to you, make it not be important to me. If this thing is important to you, make it be important to me. And surrender to your will. Father, if it is your will, let it be done in this area or with this person or with me. Some people contact me and they say, pray that God uh, bless my girlfriend financially. First of all, there's no chance I'm going to pray that prayer to God because you shouldn't be having a girlfriend to begin with because the Bible is against fornication. So why would I pray to God for him to bless sin? Uh let's stop praying God do this God do that God, God your will be done not my will 
whatever you want. Show me what your will is in my life for this. Whatever is not your will, remove it. Okay, now let's get to the other part. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the fourth part. So it, it, the Bible is talking about daily bread, spiritual and physical. Not only your food for the day, your physical food, but your spiritual food as well. So depend on him. Ask him, pray to him that he meets your needs daily. Don't pray to God, God provide for everything for the whole year that I'm going to need. If it is his will, he will do it. This is why we should pray for his will. Uh, provide everything I'm going to need for the, for the next five years. Supply for everything I'm going to need for the rest of my life. Because if God does that, then you don't need him anymore. You don't depend on him more. You don't depend on him. Well, God wants you to depend on him. Give us this day our daily bread, not our yearly bread, our daily bread. Not just the physical food, but the spiritual food, also the word of God. If you receive too much of this revelation, it might you might not be able to handle it. This is why um, uh, babies in Christ start off with milk and then with solid food, right? So depend on him. Ask that he meets your daily needs, spiritually and physically. This destroys any self-reliance where I depend on myself or it's all about me. And that's where pride sneaks in an ego. That's why Satan fell from heaven because of pride. So pray <coughs> for your daily needs to destroy any place of self-reliance. Depend on God completely. So you will always be in his presence, not a place where you enter and exit, enter and exit his presence, where you're always in his presence because you're always depending on him because he's the only one that supplies for. Because, Father, you're the only one that I look to to give me this day my daily bread. All right. It's not don't ask for one time solutions. Fix this whole thing. My. my Everything I need for the for the for the whole year. No, don't ask for one time solutions. Daily, God wants you to be going to Him daily. Give me this day our daily bread. He wants you to be going to Him daily because you're building a dependence on Him while at the same time destroying any self reliance, which can lead to pride, superiority, ego, and so on and so forth. God doesn't want you being so independent that you don't need Him. He wants you being independent. So, for example, he teaches you how to take your kids to school and then you take your own kids to school rather than saying, God, you know, you take my kids to school. He wants you to be dependent on some level, but he wants you to be dependent on him first. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes from God. So pray, God, give me this day my daily bread. The next part is and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. That's our, that's the fifth thing that's in this prayer. So being forgiven and forgiving others are related. You see, let me turn this around. Being forgiven and forgiving others are related. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. As forgive us our trespasses as we also forgive those who trespass against us. Well, hang on a minute. Jesus already forgave me when he went to the cross 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Yes, he did. So when the Bible is saying here, forgive us our sins as I also have forgiven those who have sinned against me. What the Bible is saying is that when you hold unforgiveness in your heart because you're not forgiving the other person, you're holding on to a heaviness. See, when you're holding on forgiveness, you're not hurting the other person, you're hurting yourself. You're holding on to a heaviness. So every time you think of what they did, it bothers you. You get offended. You get angry. It's a heaviness. It's a tightness in you. That's not your, It's not that you're feeling this torment because God has not forgiven you. God has already forgiven you. You're, you're living out, experiencing this torment because you have not forgiven the other person. So forgive us our debts as I have already forgiven my debtors as i already have forgiven those who have sinned against me so it's a well-being thing it's a personal well-being thing that's going on there it's for your well-being 
if I'm not forgiving somebody who has done something wrong against me, I'm, every time they come into my mind of what they did to me, I will feel offended, I will get angry, I will feel heavy. It's destroying my well-being. That will be the equivalent of allowing the enemy to come in and steal. The enemy comes to uh, um, uh, kill, steal and destroy. So I'm giving the devil a foothold. He's coming in, he's stealing from me, he's tormenting me. But Jesus says, but I have come to give you life more abundantly. So we have to stop opening the door to the devil if we're going to walk in this abundant life that Jesus came and paid the price for. And a part of that abundant life is allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you into all unforgiveness so you can start living in the fullness of joy, in the fullness of peace that is already yours, that Jesus has already paid the price for. It's about well-being. So pray for that. Father, help me to forgive. Help uh, help me forgive this person. Help me to see them through your eyes. When the Bible says, forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors, it's not telling you recite those words every day, every day, every day, every day. No, it, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to make that verse personal for you. And it could be that you haven't forgiven a, 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 a a parent or a grandparent or a sibling or a colleague father help me to forgive help me see them through your eyes give me your eyes so that i can perceive through holy eyes help me make a covenant and i'm just giving examples now help me make a covenant with my eyes that i stop seeing defiled things stop thinking defiled things and everything they have done for me help me cleanse me purify me cleanse my heart help me to find it in my heart to forgive them and and, and jesus says Pray for them who hurt you, who use you. So start praying for them. Father, I want what's good for them. May you bless them. May your blessing come upon them. You know, if the blessing of God comes upon them, then they're blessed. Then they will stop behaving in ways that bother you. But we think if God blesses them, then they're going to be blessed and they'll continue behaving in ways that bother me no when they're blessed they start to behave differently like in a way that is of christ they start behaving differently toward you toward everything so they no longer operate in the things that they did that hurt you pray for these things make make the prayer personal to you as led by the holy spirit always then it says the next part is And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Don't lead. That's the sixth part. So pray against temptations. Pray for freedom. Pray for freedom from that cigarette temptation. Pray that you stop falling into the temptation of lust. Pray for strength. Help. Pray that God help you walk in the strength that is Jesus Christ. Pray. You know, the Bible says the Lord is my strength. Pray that you really have an, a, a, a knowledge, a good understanding of what it really means, means that the, that the Lord is your strength. What it, mean, it really means to walk in the strength of the Lord. Father, teach me to walk in the ways, your ways. Search my heart if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Pray that you stop giving the devil a foothold. Pray that you start walking like Jesus Christ. The power to resist, Father, give me the power to resist this temptation. It doesn't say, the Bible doesn't mean that recite this and keep reciting it for 10 years. Do not lead me into temptation, deliver me from evil. Do not lead me into temptation, deliver me from evil. Do not lead me into temptation, deliver me from evil. That's not what the Bible says when Jesus says in this manner, therefore pray. It means allow the Holy Spirit to make it personal to you. Don't repeat heathen, rep, heathen rep, how does it say it here? Do not be like the heathens. How does it say? And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions like the heathens do. Don't be like that. Allow the, allow the Holy Spirit to make it personal for you. Pray against. Father, don't. You know, Father, I see that this temptation is always po always popping up. Save me from this. Give me strength. Help me to be an overcomer. Help me to walk in the overcoming. I know Jesus crucified this temptation at Calvary 2,000 years ago. Help me to walk in the overcoming. Help me to walk in this newness of mind. Give me, get, help me to walk in this power and authority so I can have, start walking in the authority of this so I can be an overcomer. You know, pray like that. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You're acknowledging that all power is of God. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. It's all from God. So the first part, our father in heaven, 
It's focusing on God. It's not focusing on saints. It's not focusing on this. It's, it's focusing on God the Father. The second part, hallowed be your name, is focusing on how holy he is, how great he is, how magnificent he is, how much he deserves our love, our respect, reverence, fear of the Lord. Admire him, acknowledge him, praise him, glorify him. The third part, your kingdom come, your will be done, is the very first request, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is the very first request in this prayer. And that first request is requesting that God's will be done. Many of us, we jump into prayer and the first thing, before acknowledging the Father, before acknowledging his holiness, we just tell God what we want. And then once we've told him everything we want, we jump out of prayer. But the first request here, after addressing the Father, after acknowledging his holiness, the very first request is your will be done. The fourth part, give us this day our daily bread. That's where you, that's where, the, that's the second request. That's your request. That's about your needs, what you need. So you ask God for your needs, not your greeds, but your needs. The fifth thing, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those, as we forgive our debtors. It's about our souls. It's about a purifying, a cleansing of the soul. So after you've acknowledged the Father, you've addressed him, acknowledged his holiness and expressed it. You can, we come to the first request which is God's will, your will be done, God's will. Then we come to the second request. You get to ask him about your needs, spiritual and physical. And then we come to the things of the soul, anything that is defiling in the soul, any unforgiveness, any hate, any judgment, any uh, reviling, anything of the soul, any traumas, any uh, anything of the soul. Ask for the healing, ask for the deliverance, ask for the... The purification, ask for the, the, the making you holy. If you're not going to forgive others, then you're going to hold on to this heaviness. That's defiling your own soul. So the fifth thing is about the soul. The sixth thing, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, is praying against the enemy, the attacks of the enemy. That are coming up against you. This is spiritual warfare prayer. Pray that God make you a man or a woman. With hands of war and fingers ready for battle. That you overcome the evil one. You become an overpower, you, uh, overcomer. You walk in your power. You walk in your authority. Spiritual warfare battle. It's a spiritual warfare prayer. And then you close. By acknowledging him. That you are the only one with the power to do this. By myself I can do nothing. But with Christ, all things are possible. That's prayer. So it's not, prayer is not somewhere where we go into the presence of God. We say very quickly, superficially, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and then we go. Can you see how the way I've explained it to you today requires you to sit with the Holy Spirit, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit can give you utterance of what you need specifically for your life, for your situation. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. This is why you need to sit in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit needs to show you, show you what's in your soul because we address the Father, then we address His holiness, and then we ask for His things to be done. So the Holy Spirit needs to give you revelation of what is the will of God that He wants you to pray for. And then it's your request, your own personal request. The Holy Spirit will give you revelation as to how to pray for your needs and not your greeds. And then the Holy Spirit will give you revelation to pray for the things of the soul. And then the Holy Spirit will give you revelation to pray for spiritual warfare against the attacks of the enemy. This is why prayer is never done something Something so superficially this is why prayer needs to be taken seriously this is why your prayers you don't feel that your prayers are being heard because you're praying so superficially we don't just pray blah 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 just to fill the air with words we get into the presence of God and then from within his presence he gives us revelation as to what to speak back to him right so with that being said God bless you all if this ministry is blessing you and the Holy Spirit puts it up on your heart to bless back. Offering link is below. Um, for those of you who have not already purchased my books, links are below. God bless you.